Now, let's do some athletics. And in 2014, Marta Bisa won a gold medal for the country after representing us in Beijing Olympics. He was the, she was the youngest athlete to have won a gold medal for Ghana. Yesterday, she sent a letter to the Ministry of Youth and Sports asking the Ministry to overturn a ban that has been imposed on her by the Ghana Athletics Association. Many would recall that after winning the gold medal, she was led to the Jubilee House where she met former president, John Dramani Mahama, where a substantial amount of money was reportedly given to her. But claims were that the leadership of the Ghana Athletics Association had asked her to pay some money before she's given an opportunity to have a scholarship of studying abroad. And following these allegations, she was banned by the Athletics Association indefinitely. Now she's writing to the Ministry of Youth and Sports, asking them to use the powers given to them to overturn that decision by the Ghana Athletics Association. After introducing herself, she said that, however, in 2015, the Ghana Athletics Association and Professor Francis Jodu unlawfully slapped an indefinite ban on me for no tangible reason. I have been serving this ban for six years and counting. I am in the process of qualifying for the 2021 Summer Olympic Games to be held in Tokyo, Japan. I therefore call on the Ministry of Youth and Sports to intervene and use the powers to overturn this unlawful and unjust infringement against my human rights and gender. Please note, this also, this also happened to me when I was a minor. That is what she's saying in the letter that was sent to the Ministry of Youth and Sports, calling on Mustafa Yusuf and his team to overturn the ban that was imposed on her. On this note, I say thank you very much no, for joining no, no, me no, for no, sports. No, you're not going, not yet. This is an invasion. No, it's not. This is my show. W what did you say about hats again? Um, the ghost that has haunted them for no, 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 no. Years. We're talking about the form yesterday, and well, I, I, at this I point, think that, talk to me as an analyst. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do away with my fanatism. Thank you. And talk to you as someone who has seen House of Oak play, and they look very scary. The improvement of that thing under Samuel Boedu clearly speaks of a man who understands what he's doing with the club. Either two, you would see players who lacked confidence, but at this point, they are so confident on the ball to the extent that they now do what many would say in the Ghanaian palace, Keche. Mm -hmm. You see someone like Daniel Banier Afriye now flicking the ball over opponents. This was a boy who was struggling to actually make decisions on the pitch. You do recall that famous interview where he said that um, he and the goalkeeper thought differently and the goalkeeper saved the ball and all that. You look at Benjamin Efutu, you're looking at uh, Ansa Boche, Emmanuel Nete, you're looking at Daniel Banyan oh, or Ben Genia. These boys have been stupendous. And I think that Sunday is going to be a very big afternoon of football. I also believe Asante Kotoko, they have got their own flaws, but games like this comes with a different psychological, um, different things comes to play in mm. games like this. So just maybe it might be a difficult afternoon for Kotoko, it could also be a difficult afternoon for House of Oak. We've seen this before in 2016, when House of Oak were on a very good run, Kotoko were struggling, then came in, Michael Ose won three games in succession. They came to Accra on May 2 and defeated House of Oak 1-0, pulling that howler from the late Suleiman. Just maybe this could be a different story, but I do hope that it wouldn't be a different story. <laughs> you are hoping. Uh, yes, you've, hope. you've, you know, and, and you've done the analysis, yeah. the kind of technical knowledge you have, me, I don't have. Yeah. You've done a beautiful analysis, and then in the end, you are hoping. The point is that the point is that many would tell you that games involving House of Oak and Santi Kotoko, they go beyond the form of either of the teams. In recent years, the last time House of Oak won against Kotoko was in 2017. That famous Samosuka penalty in 2017. And now later said um, they influenced that decision. But clearly, if you look at the trajectory of 
Hearts of Oak and Kotoko matches at the Accra Sports Stadium. They've always gone the way of Asante Kotoko. That's why I think that Kotoko might just come in believing that they've got what it takes to actually win this game. And don't forget, the 12th man would be a factor in this game. I wish we could have had 30,000, 40,000 spectators at the stadium to watch this game because it's a game that is going to be really huge for either of these teams. Yeah. Hearts want to want end about 11 years of failure to win the league. Kotoko wants to end seven years of failure to win the league. Mm -hmm. So the stories, the storylines are many, but because of COVID, they say absolutely. Have that. Yeah. yeah. But yesterday you said the the Hearts fans stayed way after. Yeah, the, they stayed okay. way after the game. Two hours after the game, they were still at the stadium cheering, and that's why I'm, I'm thinking that since 2009, we have seen. Quality is this from yesterday? In. Yes, this was yesterday. Wow. We have seen quality players come in and go. The likes of Douglas and Kruman, the likes of Wunfun Kobana. But this generation of Hearts of Oak players seem to be on a different level with different confidence. Moro Salifu, stupendous footballer. Daniel Bani, after winning that under 20 Cup of Nations for Ghana with the U20 team in Mauritania, has been a different player. Mm. Benjamin Ofuja, I will always put him at the pedestal of one of the top midfielders we have in the country. And Saboche, that's one of the technically gifted players in the Ghana Premier League. But when I start talking about Kodoko, you go like, hey. No, no, we're not talking. We're, not, we're done. We're done. You, you are wrapping up. And me, I came to ask you oh, a hard question. So, so why would you start talking about Kotoko? Why? No, yes. Like, we want an objective conversation. Yes, no, let me get okay, 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 balance it. No, no. Who, who, is, who is balancing what? I ask you a hard question. So, what are you balancing? No, I just want to tell please, you that. Please, Imaro please. Jean please is... wrap up. Mutal, I will wrap up. Well, that's it for sports this morning. What he brought to us, not the this one, not this one. You are a Kotoko fan, aren't you? I do. I am. Yeah. So, a big Kotoko fan yeah. for that matter. So why would I, I want you to? Yeah, yeah. Why would I want? No, but to but, talk but to you just about to paint the quality oh, please, please, of please, please. the Kotoko team. Please, I beg you. Who does you? No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm dedicating I'm, I'm dedicating my look <laughs> this morning to a man uh, who is Papa Kou Sesakwe. This is to you from your masters to you. Stay with us. <laughs>